Welcome to Friday Night Fashion. I'm Amanda Wakeley. I'm Jo Elvin. Welcome. Hope you've got something chilled in a glass to enjoy street style with us. This week, we are going behind the scenes of all the different fashion weeks to look at street style. And street style is something that is a, almost a runway in itself. And let's, let's not forget, Fashion Week is not just about the fashion houses, the designers, the influencers, the celebrities. It is about the fashion enthusiasts. So Joe and I thought we'd do a little bit of a rundown to talk about the trends, the weird and wonderful uh, images that we have found from street style, as well as the pure sublime looks that are just completely inspirational. So let's kick off, Joe. I mean, it's it really is how long is a piece of string, isn't it? There are so many different, uh, like hundreds, thousands of people go to the shows. And genuinely, one of the things that I always really enjoy about Fashion Weeks is looking at the crowds outside, looking at the audience. And it, 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 I'd say inevitably with the birth of social media, it went insane. I don't know when the last time you went to Milan Fashion Week was, Amanda, but there are times when the you've got the traffic to contend with getting out, out of a show. In Milan, you've got the people traffic with like hundreds of people preening and peacocking and hundreds of photographers trying to get that shot nearly getting run over in the process. Sometimes it can take you an hour to get out of that traffic jam to get onto the road to ne to leave to the next show. It's it, it's a whole other planet in an industry in itself. Now, I find this fascinating because you and I come to this from completely different places. I didn't do the Fashion Week circus because obviously by that I mean New York, London, Milan and Paris. I was busy beavering away behind the scenes getting our show to as perfect as we could. And so you've seen the whole front of house, front of venue street. And yeah. I was right that back there behind the scenes. So we come at this from two very different places, but with a shared passion for fashion yeah. and enthusiasm for those fashion enthusiasts that we want to talk about today. Yep, but I think exactly. What's, what's really interesting to me is when I, when I was sort of pulling together my research is how the big houses now are completely using the celebrities and the influencers as basically their campaigns or an extension of their campaigns. Yeah. They are these people from head to toe and then into hair and makeup and that to me is, is beautiful in itself but it doesn't have the charm and the grit and the sheer enthusiasm and inspiration of street style. I completely agree I remember sitting uh, once at a Louis Vuitton show when do you remember that her name is Chiara Ferrigmo I think Ferragamo the, the blonde salad girl she was yes. one of the first big influencers and she was sitting front row at Louis Vuitton in head to toe Louis Vuitton down to the bag the shoes the eyewear the, and I it's just that's not style to me and it's not street style so I kind of have tried to find the people who and I could get it wrong, I guess, but it's like not who who haven't been sponsored in that way for my looks. And and I have tried to do the same because to me that is far more inspiring than basically the houses just literally, as you said, dressing someone head to foot. Yeah. So one of my favourites is um, Paris Style Sixteen. I just love this guy um, in his what looks like a, a Vuitton um, sort of hack of a, a, a jacket. I, you know, I might be wrong. It might be the real thing. Um, yeah. But I just love the idea of, you know, these these handles put onto the jacket, the the hearts of the, the canvas. I think super cool. And then red bandana, red pants, really you know and then and then the trilby and the ease and the sunglasses it's just it's it's just and the fact that he's got both a bandana and a tie on i just i think the styling and, look and at the another bandana, bandana at the hip another yeah, bandana and, at the hip i mean so he, he knows he's got it going stylish. on 
Yeah. yeah. And he knows he's got it going on. There's like, that's, when I used to go to the shows, I used to obsess over my outfits and worry about my outfits. And then I'd go out and see someone like that who they've just got innate style and they just know how to throw things together. And even if they think some people won't like this, they still know it looks good. I never really felt like I had that. I think there's a lesson here to everybody. And that is, if it feels good to you, just wear it. And, yeah. and wear it with confidence and you you will shine, even if it doesn't work, quite frankly. Yep, I completely agree. Now, I'm going to take you on that note to one of my favourite looks, which is Milan, which we're calling for our reference as Street Style 7. Now, this lady is, she was, this is a photograph by the Street Style snapper Tommy Ton, who I'm a big fan of. You can see him on Instagram. Uh, she's wearing a green plaid jumpsuit. That's three elven ticks right there. Green <laughs> plaid jumpsuit. And I don't know if she works in fashion. I suspect not. She's just, a, a, you know, a, a Milanese lady. He happened to snap on the street and she absolutely exemplifies everything I love about people watching in Milan. It's just, it's a little bit crazy, but it's still sort of relaxed and you can tell it's just her. I, when when I saw your images come through, I just thought that is so Joe Elvin, and it is also <laughs> probably hashtag close my husband hate. Oh, hundred percent. And I don't know. I she's probably not. I mean, I'm I'm probably a bit younger than her, but she's a bit older than me, and so she's really inspired me. I'm get as I said in I think last week. I'm heading towards full clown aesthetic in my old age. That's what's happening. That's happening. <laughs> Talking Inspired about by street stuff. <laughs> clown aesthetic. Um, can we just go to the image to the to the left of that? Oh, Erica Badu, the 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 iconic um, music artist. Yep. Yeah, I mean, this is Erica's brand. <laughs> it's like Erica's brand is, you know, what what is happening, and I don't understand it, but you know. <laughs> It's like, she's kind of amazing. You've got to, the, the top half reminds me of, do you remember Beyonce's video for the, for the song Reformation? It's a strong influence there. I couldn't tell you what's going on at the bottom half. And I'm slightly worried that that's all real fur. I don't think it is. I had a really good look at it. Um, mm. And it, you know, it's supposed to be probably foxtails or, or something like that. Um, it looks like, it looks like Willie's. I didn't say that. You did. Uh, very but furry But you, you were thinking it. <laughs> it did briefly cross my mind. Um, yeah. But I, I think for me, what what I love about street style are, are the very exaggerated elements that these fashion enthusiasts put together. You know, 100%. everything in yeah. that look is completely exaggerated, whether yeah. it, you know, the, how deep the hat is, the oversized volume of that leather jacket, and then this bonkers skirt, if you can call it that, or overskirt, um, and and then the sort of absolutely poker straight platinum blonde hair, just and and the sort of seriousness of the pose is, you know, talk about peacocks and preening. That's that really that's a pre a peacock moment, isn't it? But, uh, I mean, from what I know about um, the mean streets of Milan and Paris, let's just say I really hope that Erica was not gripped by a sudden need for a loo because that, was, that wasn't going to, that outfit was not going to serve her. We've got um, people called Gemma Wolfson and Salavat Kaipir in Rick Owens. They are really taking the theatre to the streets in that look. I had a moment there of thinking, is that you and I in our dotage? Oh, I hope so. <laughs> Although I suspect both you and I would probably want a little bit more colour. Yeah, a little bit more comfort. But yeah. I, I mean, what theatre that is. I don't um, understand it, but maybe, you know, it's not for the likes of me to understand, clearly. No, and a lot of Rick Owens' catwalk collections are fairly hard to, to understand. And so to me, that's just a, it's, it's an exaggerated version of what then goes down the catwalk, isn't it? It's it's a designer actually using influences very brilliantly yeah. to, to garner interest. I mean, that is, that's Rick, a brilliant image. 
Rick Owens was the one a few seasons ago who um, sort of was inspired by the Lee Bowery art where he had models going out with another model strapped so that their bottom was in their face. So, yeah, I, I don't know how else to, I don't, know, I don't know how to follow that sentence, but, you know, that's a fact. Yeah. <laughs> Can we just talk? briefly about some of these i think super chic and effortless yeah let, let's go back to that styles because yeah. to me these are these are women who are wearing obviously very beautiful designer clothes but they're mixing it up a little bit you yep. know in style 13 you've got you know a, a beautiful you know um creamy colored suit but this woman has thrown on a, a very um, faded denim shirt and, and just sort of taken the whole sort of quite grown up suit to be quite cool and elevated. I mean, um, that is that's my fantasy wardrobe right there. Uh, I mean, it's super, super chic, I, I think. The same as, as true of the woman um, in in the Milan um, number nine image with that lime green shirt, the lemon yellow sweater. It's all that to me though is is a real lesson in wearing something effortlessly. You know. Yeah, but but also, if I when I saw her, my immediate response was, oh, I've never thought to put those colours together. That's that's genius. I love it. And I love it with cut through with the black as well. Yeah. Uh, and then the khaki sunglasses, the black back, very, very chic. I I had to do a nod to um, Milan style 11 because you know, there's a lot of big knickers out there and no yeah. shorts and no skirts. And so I thought, you know what, if you're going to wear it, you need to look like that. I think I, that's that made me miss Milan because I would have there. I guarantee you that somebody that we know in the industry would have raisined that one out, and then frankly, the rest of us would have been talking about that person for the rest of the day, going, "Have you seen what they're wearing? <laughs> have you?" And, and that would have been the entertainment for the week. But did you editors used to really critique each other's looks, each other's sort of fashion? Sometimes. Weekend? Um, sometimes if somebody was really doing something like either whether they'd clearly um, spent a lot of money or if they'd clearly um, borrowed every single piece of their wardrobe um, or if there was one season where an editor wore exactly the same thing for three days running it so we're all like that's unusual maybe she's writing a piece for someone you know so it, it's not particularly bitchy but it's like wow and and you I used to sit next to one editor who would re remain nameless, who would look around and say to me, have you seen that everybody else has got that designer bag except us? So they've given everyone except you and me this bag. And then I and I was feeling quite nice until that moment. And then I'd be then I'd feel like shit for the rest of the day. <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine the pressure that must have gone into dressing for the shows. I used to, it, it, it definitely um, gave me a bit of a high school feeling again, like, you know, like, and, and no matter how much I'd obsessed over it and how pleased I was with what I'd packed, the minute I got the suit out of the suitcase, we're like, oh my God, I've packed a load of rubbish. Oh, and I did hear about one editor who one day refused to leave her hotel room because she hated her outfit. Oh no, mm. God, life's too short. Oh, Life indeed, indeed. Short. And and then, but one of the beauties of this whole street style phenomenon is that um, there are so many peacocks that it's very easy to just go unnoticed if you want to as well. And do you think some of the more senior editors just play it right down to to let the other peacocks? Yes, peacock. because I, I, I think it was Susie Menkes, the esteemed writer a few years ago, who, who first coined that as saying, oh, all this peacocking that goes on, it never used to in my day. We always used to turn up in our black black trousers and a black jacket and get on with it, you know. And so I think that that launched a bit of a sea change and that the really established editors, um, your Kate Feelings, your Lucinda Chambers, people like that who'd worked at Vogue, they really leaned into... Oh, I'm not getting into any of that. So Kate Phelan would rock up in a pair of Levi 501s and a white T-shirt and still look the best dressed there. Yeah, absolutely. And that's, that's real style. So, yeah. Yeah. 
let's just talk about Rihanna and Dior for a second. <gasps> yes, let's do that. Where is she? Now, I, you know, I tried not to put um, too many people who'd obviously been styled to within an inch of their lives, but I just love her use of this new baseball cap trend. I absolutely love it. That's why I picked this picture. And do you think she threw that on to make no, it, I don't. To make it a bit hurt? <laughs> I, I don't actually. I think that would have been styled onto her. But I mean, make no mistake, these celebrities, they say yes or no. So she she's yeah. happy with that look. And I think it's it's almost got it's almost got like a jockey, a, a race jockey height to it, that one. And I think that's yes. really why I like it. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, I don't know if it's my favorite, but Street Style One right next to Rihanna on our sheets. Um, the lady in some sort of yep. almost maleficent headdress there on her on her bow. I know I would have seen that and gone, wow, you know, that that's just sort of like quietly exuding a confidence and a glamour that I, I just kind of love. I don't know if I love that pink top, but I love how it looks on her. Yeah, she's she's rocking it, isn't she? She really is. And, she, and again, she knows it. It's like you can just tell when these people are so happy that they've been noticed and they've been snapped and they've nailed yep. it. Yeah. Yep. Can we yeah. talk about Copenhagen for a moment, though? Because what? I do uh, think... Amanda, I would be delighted to. It is the home of street style cool. Um, there's something about Copenhagen to me that these women and men are really really innately cool and what I love about it is it's sort of what I what I think of as East the East London vibe you yeah. know it's a little bit charity shop it's a little bit designer but it's totally owned by each one of those people street style four from Copenhagen she is just gorgeous yeah and she absolutely that absolutely. is how if I put that on I would look like there was an explosion in a charity shop and I was a terrible victim of it. But on her, it's just... Mwah. And there's always that sort of style hack of whether it's a half tuck or, you know, in Street Style 4, she's, you know, she's got one of her jeans legs tucked into her silver, probably Ganny or Isabel Morant cowboy boots. It's fabulous. And because you just don't want to run the risk of somebody not noticing that silver cowboy boot. So, exactly. you know, I think she's she's played a blinder there. <laughs> she has. And I, I found New York interesting in a way that it was so polished. It was so, you know, you're, you're not getting those really mad, quirky enthusiasts. But that really then ref is reflected through into the designers and and their shows there's yep. it's it's far um cleaner and sort of more pared down i was going to say chica for me it's for me it's chica um but it it is it's sort of more pared down and it really is a reflection of the designers but i wonder whether it's the tail wagging the dog or the dog wagging the tail or a bit of I both i think i think the new york i've got a lot of new york friends i'll just caveat that uh, but there's there's definitely um, a buttoned up and a, a just less less humor and less uh, what I suppose the Americans would call a bit of a loosey goosey attitude to anything across business. They you know everything is serious, including yeah. your polished look. Although street style number four lady in her hat and barrel leg jeans and her um, uh, her harness. I think that's that's quite, that's quite brave for New York, and I think she looks kind of great. I I think so too, and I and as sort of when I put that in, I thought actually take the harness off, and you've got a completely understandable look, but yeah. the harness just takes it to another level. Yep, I think it's fabulous. Um, I also love and speaking of polish, number six, that is that is absolutely pure New York to me. It's like what? a little bit of a cheeky feather just jutting out there, but everything is sleek, 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 polish, polish, it, polish. It is, and yet so cool too, with that yeah. sort of gawp core, oversized, um, you know, jacket. And then, as you said, the feathers and the the, the neutral mules, just, you know, the, the hair tuck, 
everything is sort of tick, 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 isn't it? Yeah. Although I like that we've got a turban in the mix. Didn't see that coming. New York Street style H. H, that's, not H. That's H. quite, that is quite brave. That's, you know, borderline Palm Beach in the 60s, isn't it? A little bit um, Puccini, the, you know, the, the clown, that one. Yes. It's a bit, um, but it's a bit also without the headdress, she could have got that in Cos. Yep. So I don't know. I don't know what I think of this. It's kind of like it does remind me the headpiece and the glasses reminds me of those really cool old, um, very tightly cropped David Bailey Vogue covers. So I think it's kind of cool. Uh, absolutely. And yeah. and to me, it just reminds me that, you know, that and the harness, the transformative power of accessories. And I think I, I put in one way here, street style 20 in Milan with that giant oversized bag. And, and you know, that sort of transforms that look to be a very fashion look from actually quite a believable look. Oh, it's very silly, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, it's just stupid. <laughs> it's just, if I was trying to get in or out of a show and I was anywhere near her, I'd be fuming. She's like, she's just taking up too much personal space. <laughs> I want to go to Shanghai now. Right. Where you had chosen a, a very cool person. Now, let re, anybody who knows me will know I've sort of like developed a, a bit of an eye for a good looking young Asian man. Sorry about that. But and so this one did catch my eye. Number street star number five, but looking so cool. He certainly is. There's, Love those fringy jeans. Yeah, but there's um, there's elements of many things. Let's put it that way. Yeah. I love it though, and I love. There's something about because I do follow a lot of K-pop. The K, the, the that that aesthetic for the like the Far East Asia, they haven't really done what men here have done and gone for the skinny jean thing. Everyone wears like really sort of like skater style, and I I really love it. I think it looks great on them. Yeah, yeah. No, I I think he looks super super cool, um, and like you love those jeans absolutely mm. love those jeans i can see you in those amanda i can see you making those jeans well i think sooner or later we've got to do a little bit on denim don't you oh think? yes please oh yeah, yeah. i'm obsessed maybe yeah. well maybe everyone's we obsessed go out and have a shop yes and you can help me find jeans nirvana jeans nirvana well you know it's funny a lot of people have been saying how do i get on from skinny jeans so there, there might be something in there but we'll we'll come back to that um, it's pretty it's the, pretty easy if you never went to skinny jeans i'll tell you that <laughs> <laughs> just yeah. on shanghai i absolutely loved look too um i just love her you know black and white hair that sort of very purposeful blonde um you know blonde roots um just she is the epitome of sort of effortless. It's incredible. And that's, again, shows you the, the influence of, of pop from that side of the world because my daughter, until very recently, had a very, very similar hair colour job and it was all because of K-pop. K-pop. Yeah. It all comes back to K-pop, doesn't it? It does for me, I'm afraid. Sorry. Yeah. Um, and just coming back to Paris again, I, I think, you know, that... There were a lot of looks there that, um, and I think in street style in general, that if you exaggerate the look, whether it's the denim, whether it's the oversized man's jacket or the print on print on print, that is what really has stood out to me in in these sort of fashion week street styles. It's when, when thing, whether it's, you know, the bag, whatever it is, it, or the layering of bags. I love that, you know, wearing two of the same bags and different yeah. colours and different yeah. proportions. It's just, bet, it's clever and fun. The designers like that when you buy two bags as well. But, um, uh, they they never mind, let's no, put it that way. But I love this guy rocking his double denim. Oh, I, I thought so cool. And every single detail of that look has been thought through, you know, from the the white shirt, black tie, the black 
belt that then you know it has um the the strap hanging to the white tassels on the black shoes um Ugh. and the 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 white i what's he got in his hand is it it's it's, um, a, it's a cap i think it is a, a cap but yeah every you know with the black glove on ever that is proper He's thought every detail through. I, I'm very much enjoying the um, shirt as a jacket over the shirt and tie. Yep. I, I think might try really, that. Ooh, could that, that could end up in your um, week on a wall, I think, maybe. And clothes my husband hates, for sure. It, definitely. Yeah. I mean, yeah. there's sort of almost reason to chop the bottom of a jacket off to be able to tuck it in and belt it, isn't there? I love it. I love it. And this is what this is the brilliant thing about street style is you just never know when you're going to be inspired to, to mix up something in your wardrobe. And it makes it often makes me look at things like I never thought to wear my shirt like that. I love it. Yeah. On that note, and then I think we should wrap up um, Paris Street Style 12, the bandeau that is made of about eight belts. I oh, yes. I, I love that. Genius absolutely genius and you know again it's the sort of the extreme of an idea um but it sort of works so well that would be really great for me with my flat chest as well because then i would be in no danger of losing the bandeau maybe that's what maybe that was what inspired it like practicality rather than style <laughs> i think it's fantastic um she's got a great so haircut as well from from street style um, I think we should just talk a little bit about what these trends are, how they're going to translate into mainstream fashion, mm -hmm. um, just to to wrap up. And I mean, for me, it's absolutely ditch the opaque tights. It's going to be all about sheer hosiery. And, and yep. it looks so cool and modern and polished. Um, there's been a lot of white tights and red tights out there. Maybe less so, but I think the the sheer tights are now looking fantastic again. I was just going to say, I think that oversized is really, really in with a vengeance as well. And I'm here for that. I think it's brilliant. Yeah, I I love the oversized vibe. I think it, it sort of looks so cool. Um, there's a lot of leather around, undoubtedly. Yep. And accessories are back, back, back. As you say, like double bagging, hats. We haven't seen hats for the longest time. There's a lot of headgear. There's a lot of interesting ways to wear belts, ties, scarves, bandanas. I think that it, any it, the, the only limit there is your creativity and imagination. Yeah, ab absolutely. Um, but I, I think street style is a source for phenomenal inspiration um, as to, you know, how people have just mashed it up and given it a go. Yep. And that's what I intend to do every day, Amanda. Just mash it up that, and give it a go. I notice you're weak on a wall on Sunday night. I look forward to it coming up on my Instagram feed and thinking, Oh, wow, thank you. What are you doing this week? And do you offer do you think, what the fuck is she doing this week? Is that what you think? <laughs> never. Never. I leave that to your husband. Yeah. <laughs> and the great public of this, of social media. <laughs> oh, they love it. They love it. So, so denim next week, maybe? I think maybe some denim next week. Yeah. Let's give it a go. I'm in the mood. Yep. And any suggestions, please shout. We're open to ideas. Absolutely. Hope you've enjoyed this edition of Friday Night Fashion. And we will be back same time, same place next week. Lots of love. Bye.